seconds to go. Start. This appeal is directed against the judgment and order of the Delhi High Court by which it allowed the appeals of the two respondents set aside the judgment and decree passed by the trial court and permitted the appellants to file their written statements within four weeks from the date of the judgment directing further that the trial court would then proceed with the suit and dispose it of in accordance with the law. The appellant Messrs. HDFC instituted a suit under Order 37 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 for realization of its dues against Defendant No. 1 and the two respondents who were the guarantors to the loan. According to the case of the appellant plaintiff and defendant number one who was the owner of a plot of land approached the appellant plaintiff for a loan for constructing a house on the plot. The loan was sanctioned. Defendant number one executed the loan agreement and a promissory note in favor of the appellant. In addition, defendant number one also created inequitable mortgage in favor of the plaintiff by depositing the title deeds of the plot in question. The other two defendants respondents before this court stood guarantee for repayment of the loan and executed the letters of guarantee. On the execution of the necessary documents, the loan was disbursed to defendant number one in two installments. The loan amount along with interest at the rate of 15% per annum was to be repaid in equalized monthly installments over a period of 180 months and in case of default according to the terms of the loan the outstanding would attract additional interest at the rate of 18% per annum. The defendants defaulted in payment of the EMIs and as a result a large sum was outstanding against them. The defendants did not pay the installments despite letters and reminders. Hence, the plaintiff invoked the guarantees and intimated the two respondents that in case of failure to make the payment, legal proceedings would be instituted against them. Despite the aforesaid letter, letter and legal notices, sent on behalf of the appellant the defendants did not pay the outstanding amount of rupees 4 lakh and the plaintiff was thus left with no option but to institute the suit for realization of its dues from defendant number one and the guarantors of the said loan as such defendant number one did not appear in the suit despite notice the two defendants respondents however appeared before the trial court and filed separate applications under order 37 rule 3 of the code of civil procedure for permission to defend the suit the defendants applications were based on a number of grounds but we may only advert to the one that seems to have weighed with the high court it was contended on behalf of the respondents that since the plaintiff appellant had got a promissory note executed in its favor by the borrower defendant number one and had further made the borrower create an equitable mortgage in its favor by deposit of title deeds, they would be absolved of their liability in terms of section 139 of the contract act. According to the respondents, their plea gave rise to a tribal issue and they accordingly sought permission to file their written statements and contest the suit. The trial court by its judgment and order examined all the pleas including the one based on section 139 of the contract act and found and held 
that none of the pleas raised by the defendants gave rise to any substantial defense against the claim of the plaintiff accordingly it dismissed the petitions filed by the defendants respondents by order dated and proceeded to decree the suit of the appellant plaintiff for a sum of rupees 4 lakh along with cost and expense and future interest at the rate of 10% per annum on the decreal amount from the date of filing of the suit till the date of realization in appeal the delhi high court as noted above set aside the order and decree passed by the trial court and directed it to allow the defendants respondents to file their written statement and proceed to try the suit from that stage the high court noted that relying upon section 139 of the contract act a contention was raised by the respondents that for recovery of its loan from defendant number 1 the principal borrower the plaintiff should have taken recourse first by either seeking to give effect to the promissory note or by enforcing the equitable mortgage neither of these remedies which were open to the plaintiff were taken recourse to and the recovery was sought to be made straight away from the appellants the high court further held that the trial judge fell into error in holding that section 139 of the contract act had no application to the facts of the case according to the high court this was beyond the scope of deciding an application for leave stop